Hello and welcome to this anime discussion, which is part of the uh, Pop Culture Online Fest for this year. Um, I am Mark Elul, one of the organizers of Malta Comic Con, and with me I have Christine Mitzi, Kenneth McAuliffe, uh, Christine Jellin, and Jade Aquilina. We'll be talking about anime, and uh, I've asked them to choose five of their top anime of all time. And uh, let's start off with Christine. Yeah, so I might as well start with the golden oldies. So, uh, on top of my list, I put the very first anime that made me fall in love with fitness. And it is Hikari no Densetsu, which in Italian it was Hilary. Mm. And my mom used to love watching it as well because her dream before meeting my dad and ending up with a kid, she wanted to become a ballerina. So this is the closest that she could reach her dream. And she tried to put it into me, but I wasn't graceful, unfortunately. But I tried to imitate Hillary as much as possible. I really loved that. Very dramatic anime, very dramatic. And dramatic, yeah, and very good music. And yes. actually, considering that it was in this style with everything done handmade, and you have a lot of body movement, that was quite amazing. I, I believe there was, there was, I might be mistaken, by the same creators or studio. There was another one about baseball, I believe. And the one of life, was it, was it with the same people? Could be, I think. The artwork, the artwork is very, very similar. Yeah, probably then. So, and you remind me, the artwork was also very close to Kiss Me Licha, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. I did not put here, but it has the same themes with music and and uh, performance. So next one is Saint Seiya, which in Italian is I Cavalieri dello Zodiaco. And this is one very well-known classics, and I'm sure you have something else to say oh, great about memory, this. Great memories from my childhood. It's in my list as well. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, I guess that it's great. Um, the, re the references to Greek mythology have always been, uh, have always been. Funny yeah. enough, I'm into Greek mythology because of another anime, because of Pollon, that introduced me to Greek mythology when I was a kid, and and it fascinated me. And Cavalier of the Zodiac draws draws on that basically, which is you know it's probably where the interest came from. But great memories of my childhood. Speaking of interests that came from anime, in fact, I'm very much into astronomy these days, and I thank, in fact, the Cavalieri dello Zodiaco because it is placed in the universe, in the cosmos, and they are named after constellations. Yeah. And when I used to hear during the episodes about certain constellations, the Pegasus, Gemini, Aries and all of them, I would, it would, uh, it would entice me and lead me to look them up in the encyclopedia. Those days we did not have the internet. And so the fact that some of them had all these background stories, like you said, mythology or astronomy, it made me appreciate more the art form of of animated cartoons or anime. To be fair, it happens yeah, that you uh, catch a certain interest in, in, in something that otherwise you wouldn't possibly be interested in after watching an anime. I mean, the Japanese have a talent for, for doing anime about boring stuff like golf, for example, <laughs> or, or tennis, yeah, or, or basketball, and their slam dunk, which is absolutely brilliant for them. For, and it's just about basketball. But, but it's it's brilliant because the it's more the interaction of the characters between each other, love triangles and all that. And the magic also. You know, they show magic and it fills, it continues to fill the imagination of children. And seeing it happen in front of you on a screen, it gives its extra uh, its extra touch um, and yeah and it, it it makes you drawn to it somehow i know that kenneth has something else to chime in about this Sense wonderful no, it's, it's an anime they're always like a, a sequel 
or a retelling of the story. I mean, there was the original anime was in 1986, then there was the Hades chapter that came in 2010 too. I stopped there. I stopped then, the Hades chapter. <laughs> then there is the Lost Compass. It's very, it's a very good anime. Just Unfortunately, it's just, just yes, it's yes, from 2009. Where do you say this? Lost Compass. Compass is so old. Yes, yes, yes. Where are series? Series. 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 Two seasons. Right. Unfortunately, it it was cancelled. Oh. Lately, lately there was there was a new one put on Netflix. Yes. Three D three D animation. Three D animation. I'm not sure what this is. Did you see it? Did you see it on Netflix? Yeah, Knights of the Zodiac. Knights of the Zodiac. Yeah, that came out in 2009. 19. 19. Last year. Two two seasons as well. I'm not sure if the Italians are the that. It's it's an Italian. Uh huh. Yes. I mean. They look, they look, I'm, I'm more like curious to watch it more than uh, it's not really connected to the. It's a different style of story. I, mean. I, I watched a couple of episodes, but uh, I I saw the characters. They, they drew them a, a bit more kid-like. A bit. I mean, they're all young in, in the original series. Is they're they're young, but but they look like they look like adults, but they're young. Yeah. And this one, they 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 portrayed them at the right age, which. I, I saw it strange and I didn't really connect it. And it's more CGI than anime. It's CGI. Yeah. Uh, exactly, it's, it's more. Yeah. CGI. Well, the CGI with, yeah. with, yeah. with yeah. such yeah. anime. Yeah. It's yeah. basically yeah. most yeah. most scenes are in the desert. Mm. Repetitive scenes. So it's not like anime, you know, like buildings and temples. It's but like but the artwork, the artwork no, is, is, is beautiful. beautiful. And it's picking up the CGI. It's, uh, yes, yes, it's incredible. Uh, incredible. The last, the last I watched was the, the latest Lupin movie. Yes, the, the, so the CG beautiful. on it is, is the character design. Every year, they, every year they just get better. It's amazing. Every year they I'm just not get fan, better. I'm not a fan of anime in, in, in 3D CG, but lately it's really picking up. It's, it's picking it's up. Yes. Yeah. yeah. My next then I have Georgie. It's a very girly anime, and I don't usually like girly animes but I, I for this one my please heart don't, just please don't say out. I'm gonna mention girly next <laughs> I didn't for a very good reason and I tell you why so the artist for the manga for Georgie very talented artist it's Yumiko Igarashi mm -hmm. and if you if you take a look at her manga they are just as artistic yeah, as the, the Georgie the, 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 series with lots of flowers, lots of details, and the in the, in the layers, yeah, yeah, yeah. the, yeah, yeah. the curves, and very fine attention to detail. And so she she designed Georgie and Candy Candy. Now what happened when they when they translated that to anime, with Georgie they did a very good job because it's quite faithful to the style of the manga. However, with Candy Candy, they didn't. They chose a different studio, and she was not happy with that at all. And in fact, if you take a look at the manga, uh, the Candy Candy manga, you see a lot of similarities in the artwork, mm -hmm. but you don't see that in the anime, unfortunately. And although I used to watch Candy Candy, and it is thanks to Candy Candy that I went later on working in healthcare. So that's another interest that I picked up from anime and I worked on it later on. However, I was disappointed as well with the, with the artwork of Candy Candy. It's dramatic, it's very expressive, but it wouldn't come into this list for today. <laughs> and yeah, I totally agree. I feel the pain of the artist and yeah, they should have done a better job with with um, with changing candy candy for the screen for the television screen yes it all, it all depends on the budget that, that, they, can afford, <laughs> exactly. that they can afford to, to, to give the series maybe georgia had a bigger budget and candy had less so georgia came before it did well and i don't know i'm just saying but i don't know can then they thought let's do another one and they made can I don't know, but is how how things usually work. No, it happens a lot. We if you look at a uh, more modern anime, there was a period when it was absolute trash with what they made. Then it sort of started picking up again. But there's a period that I, I remember I was literally not interested anymore because there was nothing. 
of interest. That was coming there. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Behind what we see on the screen, there's a business going on. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And exactly. these decisions. And yeah, absolutely. I'm, okay. I'm sure something like that led to, to, to the presentation of, of Candy, how we know it. And another one, I don't know if you remember this, La Sand Nohoshi, which is the Tule Panonero. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> So last one is Sailor Moon and this is this came later than the others that I mentioned in the 90s. I before watching Sailor Moon uh, there was a big gap uh, in my life because I, I was in my tweens and I thought that watching anime was not cool. So I think it was about four years that I stopped watching anime and cartoons on television but then Sailor Moon came and what I loved about this about this is that it brought in that magical element that we mentioned earlier and I was noticing that in anime from those times they had that magical element missing mm -hmm. so imagine I was becoming a teenager and then I see this about a young teenager as well Uzagi, Sailor Moon, uh, who is very funny, and uh, and there was this magical element. So I related to that as well, and it gave me an outlet to start thinking about the unthink unthinkable, of thinking that magical things could happen again, if only by watching TV. So I really love that Sailor Moon came in that time of my life, because it, it was a segue to put me back into the anime scene. And in fact, once that Sailor Moon ended or before it started to evolve into other series, that's when I started going back to drawing um, anime. And by that time, the internet came by as well. So it Making, gave me more opportunities. Yeah, yeah it, and it made things easier also to have access to, to merchandise. Mm -hmm. So, so it hyped you up even more. Yeah, it, it continued to encourage me even further. She Compared knows. to what they're <laughs> with the same stuff, with girls transforming into superheroes. Mm -hmm. Sailor Moon, I like the concept, it's not just one girl. Yeah. A whole team transforms. Precisely. And we see once Female again... Female Rangers. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. With different colors. <laughs> Again, we see the element of mythology in Sailor Moon as well, because yes. you have the planets. Yeah. The planets. So it's yeah, mm -hmm. I yeah. I love that as well. Of course, more astronomy for me to delve into. Uh, it so, still yeah. gives you like at this time of age, a lot of years passed with Sailor Moon, but it's evolved mm -hmm. gradually. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's yes, it did. I believe there were two times it, it, it changed. Um, the beginning of the nineties, the animation, and then. It was um, remastered again, and, and then, then there was the crystal as well. Mm -hmm. And yeah. the animation like changed. The latest yeah, one was a retelling, if I'm not mistaken. The latest one was a retelling of the story. Yes, it is, it is, it's all, all of them are retelling the story, uh -huh. yes. but they're all remastered with different animation <laughs> three times, and, and it still like gives you goosebumps like with this nostalgic thing with every time they transform. Or, as soon, as soon as the team song comes like, on, uh, it's like... <laughs> it gives me a, it gives me a, a blank face. <laughs> well, shall we move on to Khalid? Yeah, first in my list, I'm trying to avoid to not to repeat anime that were mentioned by Christina. Uh, my first is Fist of the North Star, or as known in Italian, Ken El Guerriero. I mean, most people see just the violence of this anime, but uh, going through it, you see the story that uh, a man that his girlfriend was kidnapped, he travels to get her back. Not the most complex story, yeah, let's be honest. Oh, yeah, but uh, <laughs> it's true, it's true. But I mean, then, I mean, I followed the anime, I continued to follow the anime through the years. I mean, even, for example, there were, in 2006, there were the 20th anniversary yeah, movies. movies yeah which the story goes deeper and focused, it's more focused on particular characters. And uh, it's more storytelling than fighting. Because again, there was a period in anime 
let's say, 80s and 90s, that we were watching Mazinger, that was exactly. always the same. A monster will come along, Mazinger comes out, he beats him, <coughs> everyone is happy. The next episode, again, is the same. Monster. Yeah. So there's no, there's no story, there's no, there's no, there's no uh, continuation, continuation of a certain story. I mean, you could, you could grab it anywhere, like Pokemon, yeah. and, and Basically, you're still watching yeah, and enjoying an episode. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Can it worry your head a little bit of a story, but, but it, was much, so, much it, right? it was so simplistic <laughs> still that, that it's more, it was more of like, for me, it was more like a, a showcase of all the characters that they had. I mean, he's traveling, he meets Shu, he meets, you know, Ray. Ray. So in that sense, it makes sense to have a simplistic sto story. Yeah. To, that's how I saw it. Because the, the later ones, the later ones evolved a bit more and they tried example, to tell a bit more of a story. For example, one of the movies, I, I mean, one of the movies of 2006, it was more focused on the sickness of talking, mm -hmm. how the sickness evolved during time. Mm -hmm. there, was one, there was one about Raul, Legend of Raul. Actually, yeah, two, two actually about Raul. One was more uh, based, there was even a series in 2008, Legends of the Dark King. Uh, it was an anime where uh, it shows the evolving of his empire. Mm -hmm. How he starts from the beginning, conquering. Uh, it's totally good, that was it. Yes, yes, yes. For example, uh, in, uh, and then there was a prequel. It's not that famous, Fist of the Blue Sky. Not the same style, but I mean. No, no idea. Have you watched it? I've watched the first, ep first season, yes. The second season, I started watching it. I, I still have to continue watching it, uh, but the concept is a different concept. I mean, I think they wanted just to create something related to the Fist of North Star, but different style. I mean, it's not really followed as much as Fist of North Star. Um, let's continue, for example, uh, Lupin, for example. Lupin uh, started in 1971. Lupin evolved a lot. Not really with his age, but no, no, he changed, no, he changed, no, he changed his, his jacket. His jacket, his jacket. <laughs> he jacket. We had the green jacket, red jacket, pink jacket, pink the blue jacket. Pink jacket was my favorite. Yes, actually, yes. Because it was the, it was the silliest, I think. Yes, 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 yes. Pink jacket. But uh, uh, what I really like about Lupin is just you can watch just one episode. And you enjoy it. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a standalone. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Cool. Mm. Uh, this is an anime that I'm, I'm rewatching now, nowadays, because I'm sure I've never watched all the episodes. City Hunter. A very skilled gunman. I mean, uh, he's also a maniac when it comes to beautiful girls. I have, but, a, I have a related title. But uh, I like the concept uh, because. I used to like my. It gives us the idea, you cannot judge a person with his first appearance, yeah. to know him better. Mm -hmm. I like that. The movies, the movies are, are miles better than the series. The movies are, uh -huh. are, are great. And yes, it's yes, got yes, a good true. sense of humor. Exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly, yes. exactly, exactly, exactly. Very funny. Very exactly. <laughs> and he had that, that very large hammer with <laughs> the girl. Exactly. Bigger tonnage. And the birds. I think and it's the birds. One, one ton or something. <laughs> And then you know, he's a big man, and he goes into that Fiat 125 or 126. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the mini, mini minor, yeah, 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 yeah. mini minor, and the uh, blue Fiat Panda. Uh, Fiat Panda. I love right. the animation as well, City Hunter, because he's this strong built man, certain eyes, but when something silly comes up, it's his eyes change, it comes this. When a girl, when a girl comes along. Yes, <laughs> it's more specifically, yes. When every time he sees a girl, look, he completely changes. And at the same time, where is danger? You know, yeah. it totally changes to a very protective uh, yeah. hero. Good. The next one, ha Tiger Mask. Tiger Mask, yeah. I mean... It's an old, old, old. Oh, the, yeah, the first yeah. anime came out yeah. in 1969. 69? Oh. I thought it was from the 70s. Then there was the, the second Tiger Mask in 1981. That, 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 no, that's actually I'm coming to it. In uh, 2010, the was, the yes, was good. was better. Than, uh, but what the, the there's a difference. In 2016, 
there was a Tiger Mask W, which is a continuation to the original anime, when the second Tiger Mask is completely removed from history. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it's good to have because, you know, he starts to be like a kid who wants to be a tiger. He starts to be evil and then he realizes that, uh, you know, seeing the orphans, he remembers his, like when he was a kid. That's like the story of the first. Right? Exactly. Uh, yeah, I think you mentioned a very good point here about the psychology um, in the between the lines of, of the story, of these mm -hmm. stories. I think, to my to my experience with watching Western cartoons, you find psychology, especially recently, you find more in-depth thinking and all that. But the Japanese, they they are so complex in the psychology that there is going on behind, exactly. and the dilemmas, <coughs> like you were saying, um, and even when you mentioned with Sita Hunter where you have this person who is a very skilled gunman, but then we see bits of his other personality where he is kind or where he's very funny. So I used to find these really, uh, really fascinating in, in all these anime. Yeah, unfortunately, in Malta we have the tendency to consider anime like cartoons. That's the difference that make that's that's the main difference between cartoons and the anime. We used we used to, yeah, because the, the, the newer generation knows the difference very well. I mean the the older people the ones, exactly. they used to call it Mickey Mouse actually. Exactly, yeah. exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. exactly. exactly. Yeah. So, it's true. so exactly. but the, the, the younger generation they're into it they're into it probably ten times more than exactly. us. So Exactly. There's, there's a difference. I think it's also ease of access. I mean, you can't really compare, sort of, even just from when I was young. Um, before, the only anime I used to watch was the ones available on Italia Uno. Exactly. That was it. Now, with the internet, you can. The sky's the, the, sky's the <laughs> limit. I mean, there are so many, um, um, even sites and basically you can you can get it anywhere at this point for find, even finding merch and but even netflix i mean it's crazy you now when netflix anime started like anime people. did not exist on they're netflix and even now they're I mean, producing their shows now and exactly, the shows the shows they are they producing done, they're, they're they're top notch i mean yes, they're, they're the best i've watched today. definitely nowadays we watch anime in japanese with english subtitles yeah <laughs> i mean <laughs> we watch them as they are released. Exactly, exactly. I mean, Crunchyroll, yeah, basically, exactly. literally, it's instant. I mean, I can't live without Crunchyroll. Because most probably, they will <laughs> never be released in English exactly. language. Yeah, and having access, a broader access to the community worldwide, I think also helps a lot because we are able to discuss things like we are saying here with others in other parts of the world. To get other people's views, maybe maybe recommendations. Yeah, yeah. Faster. Whereas before we would just watch watch a, an episode after school, and then yeah, maybe yeah, find exactly. our small circle yeah. of friends who also <laughs> used to, to watch it, and that's it. At first, I find it difficult to communicate with foreigners about anime because the Italians change the names. Yeah, it, it was yeah, that was a disadvantage. For example, I mentioned City Hunter. The name was called City Hunter. They just make his name Hunter, Hunter. Yes. instead of Rio Saeba. Yeah, exactly. But uh, things are changing, yeah? For example, I didn't mention Captain Tsubasa yet. Mm -hmm. Captain Tsubasa, the 2018, the latest anime, mm -hmm. in Italy, it's with the original names, mm -hmm. the original name. Mm -hmm. but, uh, that, was, that was one that was particularly butchered by the Italians. <laughs> exactly, 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 exactly. Oh, but it was nice to like. I prefer to watch it in, in Japanese, eh? because even the passion of the Japanese voice actors, like Tenzo uh, Kabayashi, yeah. it's more uh, like. Yeah. You know, though, the, I believe Italy went through went through a period. Um, there was an anime, a particular anime called F, 
what we spoke about. It was about Formula Formula One racing. Yeah, uh, that was more than one. Uh, the one. Well, there was one of them with Patrick Ross. This was Cross. called the, the, the one with Patrick Ross. They vetted so much out of it that the story did end up didn't make any sense. Because they used to edit, even if they were walking in front of a show and there's a sign in Japanese, they would edit it out. The I don't scene. know why. So if you, if they're talking and they're, they're walking in front of this shop with this sign, they edit the, sound, the, the scene out. So... If you if you edit out scenes from the movie with with dialogue that you need for the story, it's not gonna make sense. But for some reason, they went through a phase doing that. They they wanted to to cut to cut the animation from from the from the Japanese culture for some reason. Did they have the rights to this? This actually reminds well, me of the Americans. Or the, um, yeah, when when it was. Um, like the anime was adopted from by the Americans, certain anime was censored. Yes. Like even a different if, yes. if as, as simple like a character pushes another character, that, that scene was cut out. And it was literally different. Like it like bypasses the character mm -hmm. instead. I, I remember watching uh, Dragon, Ball, Dragon Ball Z for the first time on Cartoon Network. It was so edited that, that you know, half of it yes. was off. Yes. And and big splotches of yellow over punches in the face. Didn't make didn't make much uh -huh. sense. I don't know what the point was. But if they had the license to do that, exactly. exactly. But it did it did happen. It was it's editing their own, their own work. It's, 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 it actually license. reminds me of um, another anime that then they went basically. Excuse my English to hell with it. Um, uh, there's uh, ghost stories. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. But basically, Ghost Stories um, was this children's anime in, in Japan, obviously. Um, it was quite a, you know, the, the, the Pokemon type where every, every week we're meeting a new monster, new ghost kind of thing, and the, there's exorcism involved. And as an anime, it was, I mean, it was not bad, you know, you wouldn't really binge it, but it, it's not bad. But basically what the... Um, what well, the American um, uh, dubbing, like while they were dubbing it in English, what they did is they decided to completely forget the, the initial um, dialogue and invent it themselves. In fact, it is technically an unofficial dub. It never, it, it, it's still marked as a fan dub rather than an actual official dub. But there, there opened this. It opened this whole new uh, um, sort of. I, I admit, I love comedy, and, and I love cynical comedy, where you're literally making fun of yourself, if possible. Because for me, that is the epitome of that. That is my favorite type of comedy, and this literally takes anime, and it doesn't really sort of make fun of anime per se, but it doesn't take itself that seriously and it's such a breath of fresh air because sure it's it's dumb it really is because the the, the dubbing literally sometimes doesn't, doesn't even make sense there's a particular kid who instead of giving him lines they literally just give him sounds it's like ah, 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 that's all he says <laughs> um but it there's this there's this whole thing of sort of how far can you edit it before it come it becomes something completely different it's not the original anymore it's something completely different now and they decided to say like you know what let's do this instead you know and i am i honestly really admire them for it because it takes guts because i mean i guess we'll move on to me um i'm gonna mention them in no particular order i'm just gonna mention one that that i am watching or I've just, just finished watching I'm Off Today right now, which is My Hero Academia, which is, I think, my, my, the, the best anime I've watched, I've watched lately. The, the fact that they have so many, so many different characters and they're so varied, it reminds me a bit of One Piece with the, with, yes. with the various the, of the characters. The world is really rich. And in it's, it's really it's vast. It's original as well, like a single amazing. for heroes. It's, it's amazing, honestly. And they all have, nice. have all these different quirks <coughs> and they all have to follow, the, to follow the rules of their quirks and they have to learn about it. And, and it's it's I find it I find it entertaining and then, then there's All Might which is 
in my opinion, really cheesy, but really cool. Which is something which is something that is really difficult to pull off, I think. Yeah. Being yes. being cheesy, knowing that you're cheesy and although I guess he knows that he's cheesy, but still being so cool and being so just cool. You know you. I don't know how, how to explain it, but but he really is someone a bit like Superman, I guess. Yeah. You, res- you you instantly respect him when, when exactly which is something which is a little hard hard to yeah. achieve. And the protagonist is obsessed about him. And, so and oh, well, most of them are obsessed about him because yes, he's but he's more like uh, when he um, um, when he was young. Yeah, 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 yeah. In his yeah, yeah watching, like I want to be all mine. Right. And having, his, having his, <laughs> his room full of merch. Yes, and his full of and his little action figure. Yeah. It's basically us. <laughs> yeah, he he watches true. the same video like more than a hundred times. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's, exactly. a, it's a very it's a very it's a very sweet story at the yes, end of the day as yes. well. And uh, well, if, no, if someone of you hasn't watched it yet, I I, I highly recommend that you watch it because it's brilliant. And uh, another one which is recent is Attack on Titan. I have it as well. Uh, my you modern ones. You have it's gonna save us time there. <laughs> yeah. Um, which is a. a, a a very original concept as well yes, with, yeah. with these with these giants and, and I'm up to date at the moment. The naked giants. <laughs> the, yeah, the naked giants. I think there there was a live action a live action yes, yes, yeah. Japanese. The, it's one, not so. um, uh, exactly it, it's, it's not the same concept as the manga it's, different, uh, it's, it's a bit different but it's still enjoyable mm-hmm. like if you forget um, the characters what they look like and how they act including Levi, because they portrayed them totally different in the live action, but it's still enjoyable. Like, uh, forgetting the story, it's like a different, uh, whole new concept. Yeah, I have to see it, like, as something separate. Yes. Not as, it's all right, I'm going to watch. As, uh, exactly. Like the anime, or the, or the manga, how it's going. Something, something that really fascinates me about Japanese culture and their relation to manga and anime is I believe they've done a couple of adverts for for Subaru as yes, well, for yes. an SUV that is crossing a mountain, and the Titan comes up, and, uh-huh. and which is which wow. is something that I find really 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 cool that they that they use they use stuff like this in, in the adverts. It's something that in the West it's very still yeah. still, still, uh, still doesn't in sweets happen. in drinks, popular drinks. That's true. Something we should mention is the soundtracks done by Japanese composers. Attack of Titan is one of them, the opening. Um, it's amazing. Yes, the opening is very popular. Orchestrated. They, yes, the, the same orchestra did for um, the second season and the third season. It, it's the same. Um, yeah. Amazing stuff. Yeah. But there, are, there are a couple of. I, I will get into them with another title. But, but Attack on Titan. As we said, mentioned before, like Candy Candy, the animation is different from the manga. The manga is completely different. His art as a, as a, is as a character design, but that does happen. That does happen. It's completely different. That does happen. It's it's more more rough. Rough. And, rough drawing. <laughs> and he, he, he was not an artist from the beginning. He yes. started getting better through drawing Attack on Titan. It, it happens, yeah. If you look, if you look at the at the manga yeah. for Dragon Ball, the artwork changed a lot from mm-hmm. the from the beginning to the end. He got a lot better in the end. And another another title, a title that for once for one is is my favorite my favorite anime of all time. Uh, I'm gonna mention the whole franchise, not just, but my favorite is the first one. That's Ghost in the Shell. And, okay. and, if, if you look at the if you look at the manga and you look at the movie, it's it's night and day. The manga the manga is comical. It's it's by Masamu Nishio. If he's if he's familiar to you, the the artwork is very is very typical, very typical, a very typical manga style with big eyes, with big hair, and and he has a he has a he has a style of his own. But it's even the storytelling is very comical. It's complex but very comical. And the the first movie by by director Mamoru Oshii is very serious. 
I mean, com there's no absolutely no comedy in it. It's just drama, and it's it's very serious. The way it's drawn is drawn almost realistic, and uh, it's 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 a leap. It it has nothing to do. I mean, apart from the title and and the and the the concept of the story, it's you wouldn't say it's the same thing. And another thing is that the the work, the manga, is so complex. That the first movie, I believe, is only based on, on, on a few chapters of it, mm. and it's a, it's a, it's an over an hour long movie. So, and I believe it was remastered basically, right? Yeah, I mean they um, did the live action. Basically. Not not remastered. Not remastered. There's there's there was in a sense which was another another movie, a second movie, a sort of sort of a sequel to it. Then there was standalone complex that was a series. Um, Basically, more of the same, but as it is a continuation. Then there was a rise, which was a prequel before before the section ah, nine assembled. Okay. And now lately, there was a, uh, the name eludes me, but but there's another series on Netflix. It's not S A S A C S A C. That's standalone complex as well, but uh, it's it's 3D animation again. Okay. It's another Netflix another Netflix thing, and it's brilliant as well. Actually, it's done very well. I've seen the art for it. I enjoy it as well. It always comes up as a recommendation from Netflix to watch it. It's very good. I watch it very well. Then there was then there was the the live action movie with Scarlett Johansson, which which created this incredible uproar over the internet. All the keyword the keyboard warriors and snowflakes in the world took it took it as a personal mission mission to 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 put it down. Just because they thought that because it's based on a Japanese anime, the actress has to be Japanese, even though the character in the story is Western, they wanted her to be Japanese. But I tried to explain it countless times to keyboard warriors over comments on YouTube, on on Facebook, and, and I finally lost track. But the movie didn't do too well just because of this, because they said it was whitewashing. Which, in my opinion, was stupid because the Japanese characters in the in the anime are portrayed by Japanese actors in the live action and so it could be like Western characters. Past past the uh, experience of like what they did with Dragon Ball, what they did with Death Note, so people might think, ah, yeah. another one of those probably. You know, like they could categorize it like that. The, th like, the thing is that, 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 if, that there is a history of whitewashing. Yeah. There is when, a history when, of whitewashing when taking anime them into live action yes. and I mean I admit I am not one of the biggest fans of anime to live action adaptations because you lose so much of the magic like I mean we have it's animated in a way that it makes like, the animation makes the impossible possible so obviously now that you are taking it down to live action again there is this dilemma of you can't really present certain elements that appear in uh, in the anime in the live action. It's true, but it depends on what you're doing. I mean, Ghost in the Shell is... No, I'm, not, a, no, no, I'm not talking about Ghost in the Shell. I mean, I mean no, this no. could be easily an, an extension of the Blade Runner universe. It's, exactly. It's practically, practically the same. No, no, I'm not yes. talking about Ghost in the Shell, but... Oh, the Fire Dragon Ball version. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. that's <laughs> an American movie. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 When it comes to Japanese uh -huh. live action movies related to anime, uh -huh. the Japanese are something different. When it comes, for example, the live action movie of Lupin, it was a great, a great movie, or the live action movie of Yataman. No, I never watched that. I, I, I think I was saying that. It's very loyal to the that's, original. Uh, that's that's not live action, brilliant. Yeah, it's, it's so Death Note. Death Note. The concept yeah. with the anime and, and the live action. The they, they, they managed to literally nearly replicate it, which is... I saw costumes from the live movie. And I mean, they even I could uh, portray the Shinigami. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. Yeah, they were exactly. just like, even I like in the shops. I couldn't believe it, but wow. they, they were not they the one from the anime almost. Yeah. I was a bit perplexed. What is this? Yeah, is the Shinigami were amazing. Yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> very that wow. costume. Even the whole movie, it was yeah. brilliant. Mela, I think I'm going to move on because if I, I, I could do a couple of hours talking about the host condition, <laughs> and I, I'm going to bore you. Um, Another one is another recent one, relatively recent one is One Punch Man. Uh, 
it, it's an easy watch, and I, I, I mean, it's not as it's not as varied and big. It has a lot of characters, but there's no depth. Most exactly. of the time, it's just a monster like, that comes up and he, a, he gives him one punch. It's a chill act. It's a repetitive so, chill act. Yeah. It, but, but I guess, I guess it's the... It's how, like fun, how funny it is. It's like repetitive episodes. It is, but, but, but One Punch Man is, is, is funny. Yeah. It's funny. It's an easy, it's it's an easy watch. Up. It's an easy watch. But, but it's, I, think, I think even the creator thinking that he can get away with something so simple nowadays. <laughs> I mean, it's, it, takes, it, takes, it takes balls, I think, to do it, to try it. And, and I think he managed. And I'm sure, you, I'm sure you agree, it's a fun no, it's a fun. Definitely, yes. yes. I mean, even how he portrayed the character, it's so simple. He uses this hoodie, like, with the goes shopping. Like, this guy, with just one punch, you know, and we still don't know like how. Yeah. How? Like how? 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 Sit how? 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 That's all. How? That's all. That's all he did. And he lost his hair. Yes. Yeah, and your hair falls out. And, and <laughs> we still don't know. So, as an anime, which I did like the opening. Yes, yes, definitely. Yes. 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 It's a really strong, strong you just punch. punch. <laughs> you, you hear it, it's like, oh, I did. Like, this is it's a really strong. <laughs> Another another big movie that I want. This is my last my last one for now. Another big movie that that I want to get out of the way, which probably needs more production. Zakira, which I guess yeah. I would say Ghost in the Shell is the greatest anime of all time for me. But the 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 majority the majority of people out there will say Zakira is the biggest one. Uh, it has a bit less budget than Ghost in the Shell, but it's done earlier. So. So, I mean, the monetary value is a bit different. But um, if you look into the, the amount of work that's going into it and the amount of detail that's going into it, I mean, there's, there's nothing like it after now. And it's all hand drawn. And I think it, it warrants that the music is unbelievable, the story is complex yet engaging, and it's great. The problem with Akira is. is it's not that popular as much as Ghost in the Shell. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a very good time, but I think... Um, I, I think, think I think it's because Ghost in the Shell has been allowed to continue. Exactly. And, and, you know, we're still, we're still seeing installments of Ghost in the Shell. And the hero was just a movie and it stopped there. Um, there, were, there were a lot of talks about doing a Hollywood movie about this and the people and the, 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 the public really wants it. But when Hollywood tries to make a movie like Ghost in the Shell, throws money at it, and you don't you don't go to watch it and it doesn't make it doesn't make its money back or it doesn't it is not successful. It's really hard to have Hollywood throw money at Akira then. So what these people have done by by you know running down Ghost in the Shell is practically shoot themselves in the foot. Because future project future projects will be hard to, to, to produce now. So, well yeah, done. It discourages well done. them from, from doing something like that. Do you? Okay, so my first pick would be Made in Abyss. Um, it's about these two children um, um, who, one of, the, one of them is a girl, wants to go to the, an adventure. They go to an abyss to um, find relics to bring them back to the village. But this girl wants to go even deeper into the abyss. And she found um, this boy, Greg. He's uh, like part of him, like a robot. So there is something in the abyss that um, awakens like curiosity. You want to keep watching, keep watching what's in the abyss. And it gets very deep. Um, well, it's an abyss. Yes, it's an abyss, <laughs> but the story it's, um, uh, gets wild. Like, um, the girl, um, like they get hurt and they're children, so it's uh, like, what would they do? And something like this. Like, they never delve even deeper than that. So, like, if, are they going to survive? What's going to happen next? And the, the people they encounter, like creatures they don't know about. It, it's really picked up the interest and uh, also the sound soundtrack is very wonderful. Um, it's composed by Kevin Pankin. Um, so it's Western. 
Yes, oh. he's very strange. And uh, but the music is so particular. It's, I keep listening to the soundtrack every time. Like even while while at home, it's so beautiful. Very nice. And uh, also, this was produced in two thousand and seventeen. So yeah, fairly recent. Fairly recent. And it's also it only had one season, and uh, they made like a second season into a movie instead. Mm -hmm. And the animation is also very wonderful. So sounds I, intriguing the way you mentioned it. It's um, I like stories that are continuous. Like they want you to keep watching. Like how will this end? So I think uh, it's quite an interesting anime. Like uh, for children to go somewhere beyond and they don't know where they're going. So it's. Exploration yeah. it reminds me, like the way you're describing it, of the Promised Neverland sort of. Concept. Yes, I also mentioned it here as well. Um, Promised Neverland also has that mysterious feeling. It's continuous. It's very like when you see the first episode, the same as Made in Abyss. You say, "Ah, oh, this is quite an innocent um, anime." Like, yeah, it where it's going, it's like childish. It starts but off wait until the kids. second episode. Course. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Everything changes. Um, yeah, if, if I jump to Promise Neverland as well, um, it's the same children, the same concept of children, but they start at an orphanage um, uh, along with other children as well. They all have numbers, and um, yeah, basically, something happens at the end of the episode, like uh, this child after they reach a certain age or even less sometimes gets taken away from this house but they uh, the children there think that they got home to parents or they got adopted but actually something far worse happened and the protagonist Emma um, uh, saw what happened and uh, she wanted to keep it a secret from the other kids but they wanted to get out of this house so how with the, the their guardian there also she's like you're keeping them still in the house and you can't run away and uh, also it's an uh, an anime that keeps um, want to keep um, episode after episode after episode you, you, you end up it. binging it yes. you do end up binging the it the first season um, was in 2019 and the second season was supposed to be released this year but mm. was postponed yeah. until January 2021 it's really a good series. I don't know. Put them on my list. Then. They're not geared here, right? No, no, no. <laughs> trust, me, trust me, trust me, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Um, I'll jump to something more innocent. And Fruits Basket is quite old mm. anime. And um, unfortunately, at the beginning, it was in 2001. Um, they didn't um, continue uh, the storyline as the manga for they only did like half of it, like the first and they five changed it and they manga. changed it up a bit as well. I mean, there were certain changes in the older fruits basket yes. that were very significant yes, very to the plot. <laughs> I mean, certain characters were changed completely, so that was. Um, did what that are you doing? <laughs> did that frustrate you? I started off. Uh, Fruit Basket was actually on my list as well, but the, the 2019 one. Uh, um, I started off Fruit Basket, I started off reading the manga, and when I started watching the anime, the first like few episodes are actually very faithful to the manga, and I was like, oh, this is amazing. The animation is really cute. It's this, you know, the big eyes kind of animation. Uh -huh. um, it's very shoujo, but it, it's nice. Um, but then there were the, some things happened where you're like, mm, I can't really sort of ignore this because you are, th this is a major plot point in the manga and you chose to ignore it completely <laughs> and do something completely different instead. Yeah, they did the, the, change the, some aspects of the mm, Which is why I like the 2019 one to be, to be fair yes. more because they actually kept to the plot this and time. And I really like the animation. And the relationships are better in my opinion in yes, the 2019 one as well. But now it's quite faithful to the manga, um, the 2019 one. And um, 
it's it's continuous and you fall in love with the character, especially the protagonist. She's so innocent, she's so lovable. Like yeah. how does a person like this exist? No. It's a marshmallow. <laughs> I mean, she's so nice. She's a simple girl, but yeah. she you manage to fall in love with her regardless. I mean, you can't say it because she's she's not a girly girl, because she's so innocent. You need to watch it. Like you need yeah. to give it, give it a try and say this girl is so innocent, <laughs> and everybody she, everybody loves her. I mean, she's trying to. She met these, well, basically. Chris Vasquez is about this this uh, girl who lives alone, but she manages um, to find a home with um, uh, some students, which are her classmates. But she end up knowing um, a very dark secret about them that they're all changed into um, Zodiac whenever they're hugged by the opposite sex. Yeah. <laughs> when they come into contact with the opposite sex, they transform into the, their animal of the zodiac. That makes, makes a very hard relationship. Yes, it yes. does. <laughs> it does. <laughs> it's basically the main plot of the, the anime itself. There, there are these events going on, but at the same time, at its core, it's always, okay, the, the relationship between the main character and the... The the basically the main characters are that the this girl Toru and the 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 animals of the zodiac the people who rep represent the animals of the zodiac and it's basically about her getting to know each one of them one by one and it's very psychological it, it is it is very, it's very much most and of their stories are very very sad yes but definitely what's interesting how the how horse, she reacts the horse. <laughs> yeah, it's very deep. oh my god how she she reacts to them like they might think like a normal person might be scared about him and she might judge people but she doesn't she She's just a very kind person, very, to be very honest. Very kind it's just person. Kindness, the, that's all you can yeah, call her it. kindness really shines. Even she ended up she's living not in naive. a tent. Yes. I think because she but, didn't want to find a home, um, to burden other people with yeah. finding exactly. a home. Yes. What, <laughs> what I really found interesting about that is... You can tell that that's a, it's a girl, yeah. <laughs> 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 it is. It is. It is. It is. I mean, then, uh, even the way it ends and yeah, if, you, more if you've read the manga, you would yes. know that it is a it very like good maybe ten manga. times already that manga. Yes. Okay, and jump to another anime is um, Ajin. Yes. Ajin is really good. It's a CGI anime animation. Um, it's also dark and basically it's about the student named K. Um, um, he suddenly was hit by a truck and uh, he found out he's an Anjin. An Anjin is someone that's immortal and uh, it's uh, they all wanted to eradicate these Anjin or use them for their own benefit, like the government, for example. And they're quite essential, for example, if they're testing something, instead of testing on animals, they would test it on humans. The only impact, um, the disadvantage is that they can still feel pain like if someone is cutting off your arm, you still feel like someone is cutting off your arm. So when someone is experimenting on you, like trying to test stuff on you, you're just dying repeatedly, <laughs> every single oh. time. And it happened to the student, but mm -hmm. he manages to r run away with the help of another engine. Um, uh, it's quite dark and the story continues. So I believe it has two seasons. Two. Two seasons, and you fall in love with every character, especially especially the old guy. The, 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 he's actually the bad guy in the in the anime, but he's yeah. really good, subtle. He's he's really great. Um, even the how the animation is quite action, and uh, it's the idea as well. Yes. Yes. But <laughs> honestly, the animation is it's amazing. Not, I, it's, it's not great, though, is it? As, as, you read the I actually really like it. When I found out, I watched a couple of episodes and I, I, I really liked it. When I found out about that, I said, like, mm, no. But then when it progressed and I saw like how the story is, is going. I'm so you you sort of bear with it because of the story. Because yes, it, because it's, it's, not, it's good. It's good. So. The animation is. <laughs> but then I started to watch other CGI anime like. With the help of Ajin, I started to tolerate. Mm -hmm. I had to watch. I had to watch Berserk because the the, the new yes, seasons Berserk. of Berserk are. are Berserk, but to yeah. continue the story, I had to bear with them. But the animation is 
It happens. So sometimes you need to give yourself it's, some. It's a change. Yeah. Well. Um, I like. Yeah. I like to experiment with animation styles. To be honest, I. I do admit that there are certain anime that I actually really enjoy, but still, the fact that the anime, uh, the animation just does not click with me. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is gonna be a huge controversy here, Jojo. I love Jojo's Bizarre Adventures. I love the plot, I love the story, but the animation, I don't know why. I look at it and it just... I'm pretty sure watch the first I know, episode. it's like those, a new... Those Jojo's. I don't know why. It, and the thing is, I have watched anime with a similar sort of animation and I didn't mind it, but for some reason, whenever I try to watch Jojo, it's just... I'm really enjoying the plot, but... It, it, is, it is fairly direct in my job. So I watched it. I, 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 I mean, I'm at the very end. I'm probably about, about I don't know, eight, eight episodes out of the end. It is quite it, it, it is direct, though. It is, it but is at the same time, it's, uh, it's not really sort of, you know, where basically the majority of the episodes are fillers. It, at least it's not. That but did you watch? Did you watch? Because it's it, it spans over three generations. Yes. It? Did you did you watch all of it? Yes, I have. <laughs> I still watched it all. Even so that, that I found really strange. I the, the fact that it's basically the same character repeating himself, which is not really repeating. And one is the father, the other is the son. Yeah. I mean, and what they they look exactly the same, the same, and they do exactly the same stuff. And their names are. And the same. So the names yeah. are the same. But that's why it's bizarre. <laughs> strange, so strange. And, and they introduce they introduce the, the the whole concept of the what are they called the you know the the, the old ego that comes that comes along. Uh, they uh, introduced the, 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 the stand the stand the, in the in the last season, isn't it? Yeah. So at first it was just. Mm -hmm. Basically, strong guys fighting, and then then they introduce this yes, whole thing too, yeah. which, which gives me gives me this this feeling of hmm, this guy is trying to stretch it. He he thought about something new just to be able to stretch it. You know, that gave me that feeling. Which which. Yeah. Honestly, I mean, this is something that happens with a lot of anime when they are long running, like long running anime. You're gonna end up having some sort of at least an arc or two where they will be sort of a bit dragged out and you'll have a lot of filler episodes and I mean but that's the business of it you if you are aiming for like a 350 episode anime then obviously you're gonna have to do that because otherwise you're never gonna get to that amount of episodes that you are aiming for especially if it it is based on like a long-running manga because this is for example something that happens with um, anime like One Piece and um, Fairy Tale until a, uh, until a few few years ago, where you've got a long running manga and the anime is constantly just putting out episodes alongside the manga, but at the same time, sometimes they catch up. That's when the fillers come mm -hmm. in. Yes. Yes. So, so giving giving the author time to exactly. Really see where it is. So I I understand the importance of fillers because. Honestly, I would rather get a few filler yeah. episodes than no episodes at all until yeah. they catch up with the manga or they Sorry. just go off the rails and decide to do something completely different. I'm looking at you, Black Butler. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's... Uh, fillers are important, really. I mean, they may, they may be annoying sometimes, but they are really important because that's the business of it. Really, then yeah. we have to look at it that way as well. Speaking on, on the subject as well, with CGI, like if, if you see it, like the story is going great and it, you want to know more about it, I, do, I would try to call um, to stay and um, see the whole thing, even if it's CGI. <laughs> okay. I guess even, even the story didn't grab really, me so much. I don't know. A question, Jade, um, also on the subject of CGI. Because you, you said you did watch the previous generation JoJo and the most recent ones. Yes. And did you find there was a difference in the amount of CGI used and how it affected you? Because I I saw that difference. Mm -hmm. and, and there was a shift. There was uh, definitely a shift. Yeah, and I mean, it's true, I, I think, 
I have to ease myself into the more recent ones. Yes, definitely. But, but at the same time, seeing all those colors and all those things going on, it's what attracts me to it. And funnily enough, that's what puts me off. <laughs> I don't know why. Yeah, that, and it's... I found that really interesting and curious. So I, I wanted to know if you yeah. find, found the previous episode, the previous season, more interesting, perhaps. Yeah, I would. I mean, if I had to choose, I do think the previous um, uh, seasons were a bit like, at least th this is again all personal opinion, but I do like them a bit more. I'm not, and I'm being generous with the word like again. <laughs> um, nothing against the plot, it's amazing, but yeah, the animation. The amount of C like I it's not just the amount of CGI or anything. Just sometimes you just look at something and you're like, no, it's not for me, you know. And honestly, I I, I still watched it all because again, plot. <laughs> but if you had to tell me, listen, they're gonna do JoJo all over again, and this time they're gonna do a completely different type of animation, I'm just like, oh yes, like I, that I want to <laughs> see. <laughs> So, yeah. Another one. Um, yeah, another CGI um, that's currently on Netflix is Beastars. Um, basically, is about a school of animals instead. Um, the protagonist is a grey wolf. But we see so feels something different uh, compared to other carnivores. Um, he fell in love with a rabbit. Uh, dwarf, dwarf rabbit, actually. Oh, became a vegetarian? <laughs> and not no. really. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, he's um, uh, going through this phase, like, he's confused, like, how am I falling in love with a little rabbit? Oh. I'm supposed to eat it, mm -hmm. so he's kind of like confused and... He's playing with his food. Exactly, <laughs> no. exactly. That, that's what actually people are trying yeah, to do. Um, he actually met a psychiatrist as well as a... This doctor in, in this anime is a giant panda, and they told him, I, I met a, a lot of cases like like you, you know, like you, you try to fall in love with, but you actually fall in love with food. Like, have you thought about this? And he actually gave him a magazine, a porn magazine, a rabbit magazine, just to tell him, like, if you feel something with this, then yes, you're in love with that. <laughs> <laughs> Make it rabbit. <laughs> That's until he went back to his school and uh, his dorm mates found his magazine. Like, yeah. we need to talk. <laughs> you know? But it's really good. Like, I watched the first episode, and at first, like, the, this main character, he's so shy, like, talking. And he's so quiet, mostly, not shy, very quiet. And he's like um, this bad character, actually. Mm -hmm. But when you get to know him, like, how this personality of the big gray wolf uh, develops when he meets this smaller rabbit. It's it's get really interesting, like I know just to know how he feels and accept so. But then um, there's another part like uh, from the rabbit point of view. Like he, she finds him as weird compared to the other um, students. But because um, uh, she she's a very strong character for a dwarf rabbit, but she explains herself like because I'm small I need to toughen up as, as well. And uh, most of the students like her for another way, um, uh, which Lagoshi, that's the name of the Grey Wolf, doesn't see Haru, the, the dwarf a bit for. And uh, she saw, saw, sees him a bit um, different than the other guys. Like, he's weird. He doesn't see me like this way. He sees me a completely different um, animal compared to others. And he's a carnivore, and she's a bit scared of him as well. It progressed nicely, and um, I finished the season. It's supposed to continue next year as well. It's um, 2021. I definitely recommend it. It's, it's fun to watch. It, it came up on the suggestions, but... I, I thought, what is this at first? I thought I, it was weird. Yeah. Uh, but at, once I, I got to see like three episodes, I fell in love. I couldn't stop watching them. I binged watch all in just two days. So. Shall we go to your five? Okay. So now I'm a bit, um, I admit, I like a couple, like uh, my tastes are quite varied in anime. I like uh, normally like 90s anime, but then again, I also watch more recent ones. 
Um, one of my favorites has to be Cowboy Bebop. Oh, oh. I forgot about that. It's really, that's Cowboy, one of my favorites. Uh, Cowboy Bebop, very, very good. Was just, I, 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 I watched Cowboy Bebop in the very beginning when I, I, I first started watching anime, not, you know, thinking they are cartoons on Italia Uno, but literally just seeing watched them as anime. When I was about... On MTV. I, I just used to watch on Italia when I wasn't allowed on TV when I was younger. <laughs> um, but at around 13, I sort of, you know, started watching um, anime sort of for, for itself. And I started off with Death Note. Death Note was my, the first anime I ever watched. And uh, I remember sort of, it's quite a, it's quite a big anime to start from, really. It's not really the, the type where you... It's not really your gateway anime, right, in reality. But it's... Um, um, after Death Note, it led me to Cowboy Bebop, which just honestly changed my whole view on anime, really, because I started watching even um, another one that I, I have on my list is Black Lagoon, sort of um same same time period sort of that the came. animation really is quite similar. and even the if the animation you, is quite similar if you as well. enjoyed if you enjoyed cowboy we book so much there's another one by shinichiro watanabe as well and it's samurai champion it's on my list <laughs> it's on my list i was getting it's really there. good it's i interesting. what i wanted to comment about samurai champion was the soundtrack and uh, Cowboy Bebop is basically based on Yes, I was going to mention it. Like, Cowboy, I really love the soundtrack. Yeah, Cowboy well. Bebop's soundtrack is amazing, but Samurai Champloo, maybe it's just the genre of music. I actually like it more, but Samurai Champloo was amazing. amazing. The way they mix hip hop with. Exactly. Yeah. Very old. Exactly. Um, another one is the Full Metal Alchemist franchise. I honestly Very prefer Brotherhood. I, uh, um, if I had to, it, Brotherhood is more sort of uh, loyal to the to the manga. So I admit that more. Yes. I, I tend to be more I, attracted to those anime that I usually read the manga first and then watch the anime. So that for me, if you are not really that loyal to the manga, it's gonna put me off a bit. Not really. To the point where I'm gonna stop watching, but you know I'm not gonna be. I'm gonna be a bit pissy about it. <laughs> um, um, and another one is Gurren Lagan. Gurren Lagan is. I honestly, I really meet any people that know about Gurren Lagan, and it's such a pity because it's, it's such a gem. It's amazing, and this is coming from a person who doesn't usually like mecha anime. I'm. It's not my favorite genre of anime. I usually, when, when it's mecha, I tend to just skip right over <laughs> it. But Gurren Lagan was addicting. I literally just sat there and watched it because the characters, they are so engaging. And it, all of them have these, have their backstories and you're looking into them and you've got Simon, the, the main character is just a dwarf. Yes, <laughs> I <yes>. love <laughs> He's just a cutie pie. <laughs> but yeah, it's, um, um, that's a, that's a, another one. And going to the sort of a bit of original sort of animation style is Puella Magi Madoka Magica. I mentioned that It's wow. honestly, it's one of a kind. It's the only way to describe it. You start the first episode and you see this sort of almost like pencil color yes. kind of animation with really big heads yes. and really overly it might push you away at first. yeah you would think what am i watching yeah. here it looks like a kid's show it literally looks like a kid's show at first but then you've got the action like, the action comes time. in and as soon as the action comes in the whole animation style just like, shifts it's up on its head it's, up like it's, a, it's just amazing it literally it's undescribable you have to watch it it's yes. very misleading I, I had the same sensation when i saw the first episode i thought <laughs> it was like puppets almost uh -huh. and i thought what is this but then i think i stumbled <clears throat> upon another episode and i got hooked to it and oh yeah and then when they had to choose about yeah. the, the wishes 
Yes. Yes. That, yes. Really, that really got, got me into it big time. It, it all started with... The talk actually started with mommy. Mommy, exactly. But they said, what, what, what happened? <laughs> I thought this was like this innocent girl um, transforming girls and that's it. Because that's the thing. We are also used to the magical girl trope. Exactly. So you see, yeah. you see this sort of transforming into magical girls the and you, you think, ah, it's going to be another one of those. And then it's like, no, it's not. <laughs> Definitely not. It, nothing is as it seems, basically. That's the whole plot of the anime. Nothing is as it seems, ever. <laughs> and the witches are just... The, the witch battles are just incredible yes. to be and It's very creative for the... Actually, if you, if you look at, at how the witch is created, every single uh, detail... Yes, it's, it's, it's an all, incredible... The, there's like symbolism in, in every aspect of this witch. Yeah. Shall we go on to the next one? I, I lost count. I think I've already mentioned five. Okay. But okay. <laughs> I'm just gonna mention this last one. It's um, Puseki no Kuni, which is another really... I mean, I... I, I mentioned this on my list. I honestly... It's, it's, it's very unique. That's it. It's very Thank unique. Thank you. I finally found something. It's there. just <laughs> an incredible... I, I started it's also with CGI, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> So it's yes. girly and the CGI? No, it's not girly. It's not girly at all. Yeah, no, no. no. Uh, they're genderless. They're genderless, literally. Genderless. <laughs> I was actually going to tell oh. you, you do not have an excuse on saying, like, saying it's a girly anime because the, the, the characters are girls, because the characters don't have genders. Yes. They are it's beings. It's on par with the times. <laughs> they are beings, not humans. Yes. That's the it's thing. Very underrated as well. Yes, definitely, definitely. I'm, I'm reading the manga right now as well. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's incredible, to be honest. We, every single point that, like, I, I, every single thing that I look for in an anime, it just ticks off at the highest marks. Animation is incredible. Plot is incredible. Character build up it's is just... As well. mm -hmm. It's mysterious. Yes, well. and even the character development. The character development oh, so. is amazing, <laughs> just... You see characters start off from literally nothing to sort of building themselves up, never giving up kind of thing. Yeah. And like it's is the weakest of all the gems. Exactly. She's, she's, like she's, she's, she's brittle. Diamond. She's literally... Compared to a diamond, that's 10 for her. So. I think that's all the time we'll have for this. It's already very long and <laughs> we're going to have to stop at five. Um, Thank you for joining us and let us know what your favorite anime are in the comments below. Thank you very much.